Hello everyone and welcome back to this new lesson on Firestore Fundamentals. In our last lesson we have introduced the notion of document. Let's now talk about Firestore Collections. So what is exactly a Firestore Collection? Let's switch back here to the database console in order to better understand this concept. So a collection in Firestore is an organized group of documents. The documents are related to each other and usually share the same fields. But this is not mandatory because, as you know, Firestore is a schemaless database. So in summary, Firestore is a database optimized to store large collections of small documents and a collection is a queryable group of documents. Every document in a Firestore database needs to belong to a particular collection. The document cannot exist without the collection. Notice that collections can be nested inside each other. For example, if I click here on this document, I'm going to see here a lessons collection containing lesson documents and this lessons collection exists inside this courses collection. So we go to courses, we choose a document, we find another collection. So this is known as a nested collection. Even though collections can be nested inside each other for organizational purposes, they are still fundamentally separate from each other. A collection does not own another collection. When I query the courses collection, I am only going to get course documents. I am not going to get in the result of that query the lessons collection. If I want to query the lessons collection, then I need to query it using the path that leads to it that we can find here in the console. So we need to add here courses to access the courses collection. We need to add a particular course ID and then we can access the lessons collection inside this particular course. This means that the lessons inside this lessons collection are the lessons for this particular course and no other course. So a collection can be nested inside another collection if there is a strong relationship between the entities that the documents in each collection represent, but this is not mandatory. We can put collections next to each other here at the top level, for example. Notice that unlike a table in a SQL database, you do not need to explicitly create a collection. So after you create the first document in a collection, the collection exists in the database. And if you delete all the documents in a collection, the collection is no longer present on the database. The collection gets automatically deleted. So you don't need to explicitly create or delete collections using the Firebase SDK or Angular Fire. You simply write into a document using a particular path and the collection is going to be created automatically. Now let's talk about these unique identifiers that each document has. So every document in a database needs to belong to a collection and in that collection the document is going to have a unique identifier. So this is the unique identifier for this particular document and this is the unique identifier for this second document here on the collection. This unique identifier that you see here was automatically generated by Firestore and is guaranteed to be unique for the whole database. This means that the unique identifier works in a very similar way to a primary key in a SQL database. But the big difference is that unlike in a SQL database, unique identifiers can be generated on the client side directly in the browser using Angular Fire or the Firebase SDK directly, and they can even be generated offline. So they can be generated on the client side, used to define the path to a document in the database, and then the document gets written to the database with the guarantee that the document ID is going to be unique. There will be no other document with the exact same identifier. These auto-generated Firestore unique identifiers are very convenient, but it's not mandatory to use them. So when we create a document in a collection, we can by default create a unique document identifier, but we can also specify here a key that we hard code. Let's say that, for example, we know the key up front. Let's say that this is a social security number and we type it in here. Then we can add here a field. Let's add here, for example, name uh, Vasco. And let's create this document by clicking here, save. So as we can 
see this has a completely different schema than the other documents in the collection, as this is a schemaless database. And also we have used here a unique identifier that we have specified ourselves. Now, in general, for most cases, this is not recommended and it's better to use automatically generated Firestore unique identifiers. However, in some cases, such as, for example, social security numbers for a list of persons, you might want to use a natural key as the unique identifier of your document in order to simplify your queries. If you do so, if you choose in some of your collections not to use the Firestore automatically generated identifiers, then make sure that you don't use monotonically increasing uh, document uh, IDs, such as, for example, 01, 02, 03, etc., as these might create hotspots in your indexes and harm the performance of your queries. In general, when in doubt and by default, it's recommended to always use the Firestore automatically generated unique identifiers for your collections. In the same way that in a SQL database we can create a relationship between two tables using a foreign key, here in Firestore we can also create a relationship between two collections using the unique identifiers. For example, let's take here the example of the lessons collection. We could also, instead of putting the lessons collection here, nested inside the courses collection, we could also move this collection here to the top level of our database and add here to each lesson in the lessons collection a field called course ID that would contain here the unique identifier for each course. And in this way, we would manage to link a lesson to a given course. In the particular case of the data model of our sample application, we have decided not to make the courses and the lessons uh, collections as peer collections. Instead, we have decided to nest the lessons collection inside each course, which is not possible in a SQL database. This is because there is a strong relationship between a lesson and a course. A lesson can only be part of a given course. And in fact, the notion of course does not make sense without its lessons. A course is, after all, a list of lessons and not much more. So this is why, because there is such a strong aggregation relationship between the course and the lesson entity that we have decided to nest the lessons collection inside the courses collection. This is a judgment call that you are going to have to make in your own data model for your own application. So as a guideline, think about the strength of the relationship between two entities that you want to connect in the Firestore database. If one entity really does not make sense without the other, if one entity is really part of a top level entity, then you should consider nesting the collections in order to represent that aggregation relationship between the two entities. And on the other hand, if the two entities are not strongly related with each other to the point that one entity is part of the other, then you want to consider separating the two collections into two top level collections. When in doubt, it's better to not nest the collections. But here it's a very common example of when nesting makes sense, so we have used it throughout the course. We only have here one nested collection, but we could add here as many nested collections as we need under a given document. Remember that the document does not own the nested collection. So whenever we query the document using this path, we are only going to get here the document fields and not the nested collection. If we want the nested collection, we need to query it separately. And these are the fundamental notions of collections in Firestore. Now let's talk about collection queries. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how queries work and we're going to understand exactly why queries are so performant in a Firestore database when compared to a SQL database.